<laughs> this is a talk on um, a genera a generation of libm functions or something. You'll explain it better. Uh, yeah, it's joint work. Uh, it's actually my PhD topic. Uh, it's joint work with my PhD advisor, Krista Flauter. Uh, so I would like to talk uh, a little bit about the current LibM. Uh, I would introduce you some mathematical definitions. Uh, we will formulate the problem of rewriting the current LibM implementation. And uh, I will make a small uh, presentation of our MetaLibM project, a code generator for the LibM functions. Uh, so the LibM uh, is a mathematical uh, <coughs> library that gives us uh, a, a set of mathematical functions, uh, and it supports. Uh, Sorry. Closer to the microphone. No, it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It does, uh, 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 this, 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 this microphone is only for the video camera. Sorry. The, the air conditioner is loud. Does it doesn't work. work. Um, no. Sorry. So let me come over to the center. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, the LibM uh, gives us a set of mathematical functions, and it supports important precisions: flow, double, and long double. Uh, we have already some uh, existing implementations. Uh, for example, LibM by JLibC, uh, LibM CR by Sun, uh, CR LibM by Ernest Leon, and some others. We will pay attention today on JLibC LibM, not just because it's uh, GNU GCC conference, uh, but uh, actually uh, the JLibC LibM uh, runs on all Linux powered machines from uh, just usual PCs to supercomputers and also on the Android phones. Uh, but actually it has uh, a lot of problems and uh, there were uh, some decisions to rewrite uh, this library. And uh, actually it's quite hard to do that because it was written by different developer teams uh, a long time ago. And uh, it makes uh, this code hardly maintainable. And uh, this code, some, sometimes in the code you can find some strange naming conventions. Uh, let's have a look on some uh, small examples. For example, we have a seal function written almost 20 years ago by Sun. We have uh, exponential function written by IBM. And uh, here is a function uh, half alp uh, that has actually nothing to do with uh, the alp function. It's uh, alp is a measure of an error in floating point arithmetic. But actually, this function, it computes power and returns a zero or a negative number in some cases. It, uh, it is used uh, in uh, the current power implementation. And uh, actually, if you want to understand the whole algorithm of some implemented functions in the current LibM, uh, this, uh, these examples make it uh, almost impossible. So uh, the LibM gives us a limited set of functions. Uh, we have a limited set of precisions, so it's not really uh, flexible. We can't uh, get uh, an implementation for the precision we want. Uh, it gives us only one hard-coded implementation. If we, for example, need uh, uh, to get a value of some function with the accuracy of uh, 10 bits, we don't have uh, this possibility. Um, we all know that uh, the more accurate we compute, the more, more expensive gets uh, the algorithm, the runtime. So probably it's not needed to compute uh, all the decimal digits if uh, the task uh, was to have uh, the result only with three decimal digits. Of course, uh, three decimal digits, it's not that much, but uh, we have uh, some colleagues in CERN that have a lot of uh, uh, computational da data and uh, they don't really care about uh, the digits after the third one. So uh, it could probably be quite a good idea to have uh, some compiler flags that could uh, give us a possibility to choose uh, which accuracy of the result we want, some kind of FP transcendental equals to 15 ALPS. Um, so let me introduce you some uh, mathematical uh, definitions on that. 
I was talking about uh, Alps, it's a unit in the last place. Uh, there are a lot of uh, definitions of this function, but the uh, first one was, uh, was defined as a gap uh, between the two nearest floating point numbers. So here, for example, we, have, uh, we want to represent uh, some uh, number like 12.345 in uh, floating point arithmetic with the base uh, beta equal to 10 and the precision 3. Uh, we will have uh, the representation uh, dot uh, one two three uh, times ten square. So uh, the alp of uh, this representation will be ten to minus one. It's the weight of the last uh, significant bit digit in this case. Um, we'd like to have uh, different um, in implementations of our functions. So let's call uh, a flavor a particular specification of a function. Uh, we can uh, specify it by, uh, different, by choosing different parameters alpha of uh, the absolute um, error, for example. Or we can uh, uh, say that we want uh, a relative error that is specified uh, like that. And changing this parameter will um, will involve to get different uh, implementations for each function. And uh, also we'd like to provide correct rounded functions. So uh, the absolute value, uh, the absolute error of uh, these uh, approximations shouldn't be uh, larger than half an alp. Um, it's uh, quite uh, difficult to do and uh, let's have a look why. Um, in the uh, mathematical world, we have uh, just the continuous functions. In floating point arithmetic, we have uh, a discrete set of points. So uh, the value of the function of each point has to be rounded. Um, finally, we'll get uh, the discrete set of uh, function values. And uh, we have a definition of uh, the correctly rounded function. So if uh, it is the same as the rounding of the transcendental function. This function f uppercase will be uh, called as correctly rounded version. Uh, what is the main hardness? Uh, is, uh, it is that transcendental function cannot be represented correctly. We can just approximate uh, its value. So we have some error. And uh, the rounding operation itself has an error of half an alp. So we accumulate the error, we add something to uh, half an alp, and we have to get the result not larger than half an alp. Um, in some cases, it's um, difficult to understand where should we, uh, in which direction should we round uh, the values. And uh, it leads us to the table maker's dilemma. Uh, so the value of transcendental functions uh, cannot be computed exactly, and uh, the rounding changes on the rounding borders. For example, here we have the interval uh, between the two floating point numbers. Here we have the rounding border, and all the values of light blue part of interval, they round uh, down, and uh, of dark blue, they round up. So the value y, uh, the value of our function, it cannot be computed exactly. But uh, sometimes we could probably have uh, these cases where um, this value is located in the lower part of interval. So it has to be rounded down. And uh, the only thing that we can compute is y hat, uh, the error with some, um, uh, the, the value with some error epsilon. So it will be located in the upper part of the interval and it rounds up. So uh, in this case, we have an error of uh, one alp, which is not correct. Uh, rounding. Um, we don't know actually this red point of y. Uh, we know only the interval uh, with y hat and epsilon. And uh, if this interval contains the rounding border, it's uh, called a hard round case and we cannot decide uh, where to round. So uh, the possible Mm, solution of this problem is to increase the precision in order to reduce uh, the interval size until it doesn't contain the rounding border anymore. 
um, the problem of these iterations is that we, know, we don't know how many of them we need. And uh, actually, it is implemented now in current uh, glibc uh, So um, if we need uh, huge accuracy, we could have uh, this table maker's dilemma. And uh, in these cases, the runtime of the functions would, would not be bounded, or it will be really huge. So uh, possible recommendations is they are to, to pre-compute the table maker dilemma's worst cases, or maybe to avoid the correct rounding if uh, the users don't really need it. Uh, so we want to implement different flavors of the functions. For example, here we have, uh, for single precision, uh, faithful rounding with an error of one alp and correct rounding with an error of half an alp. This gives us uh, seven decimal digits, but the needed accuracy uh, differs twice. So um, for faithful rounding, it will be fast uh, implementation, and for correct rounding, it will be slow. Uh, for double precision, the needed accuracy differs in three times. Um, except uh, these two implementations, we can have uh, some more flavors if we are not satisfied with this uh, performance. Uh, we can uh, implement functions with uh, two to the five alps and it will give us five decimal digits. And uh, as uh, more the error is, uh, the less accuracy we will need and uh, faster the result will be. Uh, when we implement uh, the functions uh, in floating point arithmetic, we need to support floating point, uh, floating point modes and flags. So uh, this gives us uh, even more flavors of our implementations. Uh, we can set floating points, floating point flags or not. So it gives us two possibilities. Uh, if we uh, support rounding modes, we have uh, three variants. We can save the mode perform all the computations and then restore it. But uh, it will be problematic if at the same time we had the signal and uh, we can just restore it. Um, the possible solution is to perform computations uh, some independent of uh, rounding modes. These algorithms will be a bit uh, more difficult and uh, a bit slower. Or we can perform integer-based computations. So we have eight more flavors. Um, so uh, rough computations is that we have three precisions, uh, flow, double, long double. We have about 50 functions in the LIBAM. Uh, let's say that we want to have uh, about 10 flavors for each precision that comes from different accuracy result. And we have eight additional flavors on um, modes and flags. So it gives us uh, about 12,000 <laughs> functions to implement. And uh, if we say that uh, each function implementation takes about one man month, <laughs> it's just not possible to do it. If we don't want to hire some uh, team of software developers that we will uh, work on this, we uh, propose you our Metalibam project. It's actually a tool that produces code from format functions. So we want to write a code generator. And uh, actually, it's the same concept as was in the 70s when people invented compilers. We don't need uh, to write uh, so much uh, uh, code in the assembly. We can have just a uh, small readable, understandable, easily understandable uh, patterns in C. So uh, our Metalibem is, uh, it already exists and uh, you can try it. Uh, it produces flexible mathematic functions implementations uh, that gives, uh, that gives uh, functions uh, for the specified domain, for the specified accuracy. Um, it supports almost all the LibM functions. Uh, we are working on the documentations and uh, we want also to add uh, the support of uh, specific functions uh, defined, for example, by differential equations. Uh, 
so let me show you a small demo. For example, we want to implement logarithm function in the domain uh, 0.575 and uh, the a target error 2 to minus 30. So we go to the problem dev file. We specify that we want logarithm, domain, target, uh, max degree, it's a degree of uh, polynomial approximations, and we have uh, table index <coughs> reads. Um, so, not here. We go to terminal, and uh, Metalibam is currently uh, a script in uh, Solia language, uh, so we uh, run it with uh, the Solia script. So the function uh, is generating and uh, it uh, runs it uh, already in order to get uh, the error plot. Uh, so we have a small delay with the GNU plot to produce uh, the errors in the result. But the implementation took five seconds, so it's not really a lot. And yeah, here I have the plot. Here we have the errors for, for the specified domain. We can also have uh, a look at the code. Uh, Uh, so, at the beginning we have the pre-computed constants for the polynomial. Uh, then we have the argument reduction function. It's not really clear for the first sight uh, what's going on, but uh, we don't need to understand this code anymore. We need just to provide uh, the problem dev uh, file and uh, it's up to the code generator to produce uh, the code. So here we have uh, tables for the logarithm function and finally we have uh, uh, the function that implements the logarithm. So here we are. Um, we uh, established contacts with uh, Red Hat and uh, I'm sorry. Um, yep. Some troubles. So Uh, we established con contacts with uh, Red Hat and uh, they are quite interested in our code generators and uh, we have uh, regular phone meetings and we have different goals of this collaboration. We want to uh, give them some functions that uh, can be already produced by Metalibam. Uh, we have the medium run goal to uh, generate different flavors of these fun functions, but uh, there is a problem to integrate uh, these flavors to, to the current implementation. So probably we will need some compiler flags or directives. Uh, sometimes we, s we suppose that some users probably will need uh, a different uh, steps of the code, uh, the exponential, for example, with the accuracy of uh, 2 to minus 5, and then the exponential with uh, accuracy 2 to minus 30, so you'll need some pragmas, maybe. And uh, the long run goal is to generate everything by Metalibam. Uh, this um, project has, uh, we can say it has uh, carrots and sticks. Um, uh, each mathematical function family needs uh, some unique processing depending on its mathematical functions, uh, properties, sorry. And uh, uh, the correct rounding is hard to implement. But if we manage with these problems, it gives us some bonuses. We get uh, function implementations uh, for the needed accuracy and precision for the specified domain. Uh, we can have um, 
the implementations for the composite functions. For example, if we want uh, an exponential of sine, we don't need to uh, handle all the special cases, nuns, infinities for the exponential. We know that uh, the domain for sine is minus one, one. Uh, we can uh, include Metalibem uh, functions that are defined by differential equations. For example, Dickmann's function uh, that is defined by an equation with a delay, uh, it's used in cryptology to produce smooth numbers. And um, automatization means more optimization. So um, we can uh, generate a lot of functions uh, and test them, get some timings and uh, choose uh, what we want to, to have. Uh, let me show you a small um, animation. Uh, we have uh, implemented uh, different exponential functions and measured uh, the timings. So uh, here we will have the precision. We will have uh, the table index sizes and uh, the degree of uh, the approximating polynomials. So um, I these different plots have uh, some jumps that uh, can be explained by using double-double uh, constants and double-double uh, computations. So here, for example, and we'll have some heels and so on. Um, each point on this surface uh, corresponds to implementation of uh, the exponential with the given parameters. So making this movie a meant implementing of uh, 6,000 functions, which would not be possible if I did it by hand. Um, so um, we have seen some LibM restrictions. Uh, we talked about problem in solving them. Uh, we went from the concept of writing code to writing code generator. Uh, I showed you that it's possible uh, to get function implementations for the specified domains with specified accuracy. And uh, it's, uh, it's possible to do it in several minutes or seconds. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>